Welcome to month five of Maddie's Baking Book Club. This month, May 2023, we read the book Little Paris Patisserie by Julie Kaplan. This book, I mean, first of all, I chose because I love romantic comedies, no matter how cheesy they are, but this story reminded me in so many ways of my own journey into specifically French patisserie, so I really wanted to share the story and get into a discussion about that. So because this book is so full of different pastries and flavors, it was both easy and hard to decide which one to turn in to a macaron, but I decided to go for one of the main character's uh, creations as she started exploring French patisserie on her own when she got to Paris. She made a strawberry chocolate eclair. The filling was a strawberry filling, and then there was the shoe for the eclair, and then it was dipped in chocolate. So I thought, even though this is relatively simple, it is really really a pretty classic dessert and it could be really really fun as a macaron and I've been really wanting to make eclair shaped macarons for quite a while. So because this dessert in the book was a strawberry chocolate eclair, I decided to not only dip my eclair macarons into chocolate for the top, but to make a cocoa powder shell. So as you've seen me doing so far, I just used the French method that I nearly always do for small batch macarons, room temperature egg whites, stream in my sugar of cream of tartar, whip that to really stiff peaks, and then I'm adding in my dry ingredients. Here today, in addition to the almond flour and powdered sugar, I added in a bit of sifted cocoa powder. If you are new to adding that to your macaron shells, it can be a little bit finicky. Too much is not a good thing, so I recommend adding only a few grams at a time, and you can either add it in directly to your batter, especially if it's only a couple grams, or you can remove a bit of the almond flour and powdered sugar to kind of balance out the weight of the dry ingredients that you have so your macaron batter doesn't end up too thick. Thick. Then I'm just proceeding to mix in and macronage my batter just like normal and then I'm going to get into piping these macaron shells. As I mentioned, these are inspired by eclairs, and so I wanted to give these macarons an eclair shape. Eclairs are really long, skinny, um, the pastry is made of pâte choux, and so because I wanted to have a long, skinny macaron, I needed a template for that. I was feeling maybe a bit lazy, and I also, when I filmed this video, my printer had broken, and so I didn't want to go through the trouble of going somewhere to print a new template. So what I did is I cut up pieces of post-it note and taped them onto another piece of paper. And while it is a little bit strange, it worked perfectly as a template for an eclair. Um, so these macarons, obviously they are both skinnier and longer than a normal macaron shell, but my goal was to have them end up with a relatively similar amount of filling and like a relatively similar size 
to a more standard macaron shell, even if the shape was a bit different. So I'm just going through, I'm piping these the same way that you would pipe any clear. I'm just dragging in one straight motion across. And then as I release the batter with my hand, I'm stopping the pressure there in my piping bag. I'm pulling upwards in the opposite direction so I don't end up with any points or weird little bits kind of dragging off to the side and it has that really nice oval shape. These I rested for the same amount of time, about 20 to 25 minutes. Then I bake them again for a normal amount of time in my kitchen, about 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about 16 to 18 minutes. After those macarons were completely cooled, I got into the dip for the chocolate portion of the eclair here. So I just melted down some dark chocolate and then added in about 3% the weight of that in grapeseed oil. You could go through the trouble of tempering the chocolate. Um, that is up to you. You could also use candy melts or something. I don't love the flavor of that, which is why I opted for going with a good quality dark chocolate and then a little bit of grapeseed oil. Then I'm dipping straight down, pulling up and kind of shaking any excess chocolate off to the side. And then because I wanted a really classic French eclair look, I'm also going to go in with some gold leaf before the chocolate dries and get a little bit of gold leaf right into the center. In my own past experience working in a French style patisserie, um, my chef's go-to move was like, if you were ever unsure about any kind of decoration, it was like, add gold leaf add gold leaf, add gold leaf. So I really <laughs> needed to add this in to this dessert to keep it with that kind of classic French patisserie vibe. For the filling, I wanted to keep this pretty simple since it also seemed like the strawberry chocolate eclair in the book was relatively basic, even though it was pretty new to our main character. So I added just some freeze-dried strawberries into a buttercream that I had on hand. And then as soon as the chocolate had completely hardened, so it wasn't melty or anything, so it'd be easy to handle, I piped in that strawberry buttercream and then then sandwiched these macarons and got them into my refrigerator to mature. If you have never coated a macaron in chocolate before, I personally don't think that it really affects how a macaron matures, especially because macarons mature based on what your filling is primarily. Um, and so for me, I would say that these macarons would take between one to three days to mature, but that is because they this is just a standard buttercream filling. There's not a ton of moisture in that, whereas if I had opted for a strawberry ganache or something like that, then it might mature more quickly, whether or not there was chocolate on the top of these. So these will get into my refrigerator a couple of days to mature, and then it is time to eat. Again, I really enjoyed reading this book because it reminded me a bit of my own journey into pastry. I too really loved pastry from an early age and wasn't really sure if I was going to love it as a career or even if I had what it took to do it as a career. So I really enjoyed watching Nina go through this process and making all these friends. It's just such a sweet romantic story anyway. Um, so I really hope if you haven't read it, you give it a try, especially if you like romantic 
romantic comedies. It is technically the third book in a series and every single book in this series is based in a different country so definitely check the other ones out as well if you are a fan of travel, food, and rom-coms. All right, now it's time for the discussion portion of this video. So if you do not want to listen, bow out now and I will see you next time. Okay, on to the book discussion. Hi everyone, Maddie here. Welcome to the discussion portion of this month's Maddie's Baking Book Club, all about the book Little Paris Patisserie by Julie Kaplan. Um, this can be a little different today. Usually I have a guest with me for more of a two-person discussion, but today it is just going to be me and you. Um, due to both a change in schedule and then I had a lot of things I wanted to share because this book reminded me so much of my own like journey into patisserie so I wanted to talk about it a lot and share some of my experiences. If you have not checked out this book yet, the story is about this girl, Nina, who uh, lives in England with her family. She has this huge family, a lot of brothers, and she's kind of just figuring out her life and dabbling in a lot of different careers. Um, and then she gets the opportunity uh, because the restaurant she is working in um, as like a front of house staff person is under renovation for a couple months and so it's closed and she suddenly doesn't have a job to go to and her older brother's friend um, is a chef and is in France and suddenly last minute in need of someone to help out with a pastry course that he ended up having to teach in Paris. So this story is about the two of them, about Nina going to Paris um, and helping out this course because she wants to learn about pastry and she also um, really wants the opportunity to be around this guy who she's had a, a crush on since high school. <laughs> So yes, it is a romantic comedy story. It does have a lot of tropes and stereotypes that you might assume about a lot of rom-coms, but what I really, really love about this author and this series um, is that each book is really also focused on like travel and adventure and food and friendship even outside of the main romance storyline so even when it is really cheesy there are so many thoughtful moments um, related to all these different aspects that i i find very charming the other really interesting thing so this technically is the third book in the series i think i wait one moment I have some of the other ones right here. The first one is this little cafe in Copenhagen, then the little Brooklyn bakery, and then the Northern Lights Lodge is the one that comes after this one. Um, and all of them, like many series in rom-coms, are about like various side characters. So in the first story, obviously we're meeting all of the characters for the first time. In the next story, one of the side characters is kind of her story and it kind of goes out from there. But each one can absolutely be read as a standalone, especially because each one, as you can tell from the titles, happens not only in a different place, but a different country. So even though there might be mention or reference to different characters or past stories, um, it's really quite casually mentioned and the focus really is on the present. So one thing that I really, really enjoyed about this story um, is that, so the little Paris patisserie and this girl Nina, she's helping out with this French patisserie course and she really doesn't know much about like French patisserie. She loves baking. And I feel like a lot of other bakers and maybe people who are following me here on YouTube, on Instagram, are also people who are starting from a place of just loving dessert, loving to bake at home. Maybe you started off making really easy like drop cookies and layer cakes and cupcakes and like things like that, right? And so you feel comfortable in this little zone of whatever maybe you grew up 
watching your family make or things that you could see in the grocery store near where you live. And so this story really explores like, okay, so what if you are like have some some amount of talent, right? You love patisserie, you know that you enjoy it, but like, what if you don't know? What if it, you want to do it as a career? What if you are interested in dabbling in it? But people are really serious about patisserie and especially in France, if it's a career you want to pursue, it is a very, very intensive, completely immersive environment. It's really hard to just kind of try out working in pastry. <laughs> you kind of have to go all in. And so here we have our main character who is like on that precipice of like, do I go for it or not? Uh, so for me as well, when I decided to go to pastry school, I was thinking like, I don't know if this is the career for me, which is why I really wanted to go to a short pastry school program. The one that I went to it was three months of school followed by an internship. And so similarly to the course in the book, that is a seven week program, but theirs was just once a week, you kind of start off and I started off with like basic things and then every week gets increasingly more challenging and the recipes get more complex. So the pastry that is in the course and in the story, there were a couple things that I was kind of like, ah. <laughs> um, for example, when they're making eclairs, the like very first day and they made the eclairs in the morning and they stopped for like lunch and coffee and then they made uh, pastry cream and then filled the eclairs. But anybody who has made pastry cream before knows that that's something that you would need to refrigerate for a minimum of like three hours unless you have a blast chiller or something and then maybe maybe a shorter time, but because it's this tiny kitchen, I'm assuming there's no blast chiller. So anyway, there were a couple things like that, or there was a day later on in the book where the chef Sebastian is finally finding a bit more motivation. He had been a bit burnt out about cooking, it seems like, and he is making macarons. And Nina had failed completely the day before and was like, pretty upset with herself for not figuring that out, which I really loved that detail. But Sebastian like makes macarons and he makes like three flavors and two things there. They were all buttercream based, which I feel like a British person doing French patisserie in Paris, I feel like the gut instinct is not buttercream. It would be ganache. So that was a bit of a surprise to me that element of it and then like immediately he was like he made the macarons and was like here try this here try this and like anybody who knows about macarons knows that they need to mature before you can really taste obviously yes you can eat them right away but again just like kind of a, a little detail but kind of an important detail that was a little bit of a miss pastry wise and then some of the things that were like really complex or like really challenging or like Sebastian was like blown away by these strawberry chocolate eclairs which is what I base my macaron on but he was just like oh my god it's so creative how did you think of this and to somebody who has extensively studied French patisserie and has traveled a lot and tried a lot of different combinations strawberry chocolate it just seems so basic to me so that was a bit of a surprise as well and kind of a letdown that she like the author kind of made it up to seem like something that was really impressive um not just to nina like i respect that somebody a novice baker would be like oh my god i created this it's amazing um but the the like main chef would be like oh my god i've never tried something like this was just a bit of like a, hmm, I don't think so. <laughs> Speaking of food though, one other thing that I really loved in this story is that I thought it depicted a really, really um, good look into somebody who is discovering 
patisserie, French patisserie for the first time, and especially someone who travels to Paris. First off, if you are new into this world of French patisserie, probably you will stop at a shop like Lagerie, which is where um, the main character Nina goes with um, this guy Alex, who actually is the main character, spoiler alert, of this next book because he does not in fact get the girl in little Paris patisserie. So anyway, he and Nina are on a date and they go to Laudre and oh, captured my heart. He orders everything on the menu, like every petit gâteau because Nina's like, I can't decide. I want to try all of them. So he gets all of them. Very impressive. Um, you could win me over easily that way. So anyway, the two of them are there, they're trying all these things and it's like, oh my gosh, wow, these flavors, these textures, it's really incredible. And I think that that is a really good look into like the first foray into French patisserie is going to a store that is so well known, but also is quite delicious. I can attest to that, I've been there many times. But at this point it is on such a large scale. There are lingerie all over the world and it's a bit more of like a common mainstream mass produced kind of a confection at this point. But then as the book goes on, Nina and she kind of kidnaps Sebastian for a day and he has broken his leg, which is why he needs her help and all of this stuff. And so it's also hard for him to get out and he wants to spend more and more time with her. So she makes this plan. She finds a way, gets this wheelchair so he can kind of easily go around Paris, which would be harder <laughs> if you have a cast on your leg and crutches. But anyway, so she's like, sensing that he's burnt out, sensing that he's not really in the kitchen. And when he is, he's kind of creating these things that Nina has decided like it, it's not living up to his potential and it's not as delicious as it could be. And so her solution, which I totally approve of, is to go out and try things at all of these different patisseries. And so they go on this like epic day long pastry tour and all of the places that they mention and the chefs that are mentioned in this story, like they're all real places. They are all real pastry chefs. These are not made up things. Um, they are mentioning, like obviously they reference Claire Heitzler when they're talking about lingerie. They're talking about Philip Consini um, and the Patisserie de Reves and then Claire Damon and Fauchon and all of these places and people that are, again, just like really, really accurate of how you might start off at Laudre as you are just dipping your toes in the water of French patisserie and then slowly work your way down and say, oh, there are all these tiny shops, there are all these other places, um, and sort of discover more and more different points of view, different styles of patisserie, from classic to really modern, all of these different things. And so I really appreciate it as someone who has studied in France and who went on a very similar journey, um, that that just seemed like very accurate. When I, before I decided to study um, in France, but when I really, really enjoyed, you know, pastry and was kind of considering, should I become a pastry chef? I was really obsessed in the beginning with like Laudre, Pierre May, all of those kind of bigger names <laughs> and stores. And then as I got to know more about patisserie, some of the books that I bought first are like Claire Heitzler, love, love, love her Plate of Desserts cookbook. I was studying in the south of France, really close to um, Lillian Bonnefoy, um store that was so amazing to go to. And then of course, all of the different shops in Paris. And I found out through like pastry magazines and word of mouth and from my chef. So it felt, yeah, I felt very, very similar to my own experience there. One other thing that I really liked about this story in the pastry world that seemed really accurate and I really liked how well it was depicted even in a short rom-com story. They really made it clear how much work is going into 
pastry as a profession and that for something like a course that might seem quite simple, right? It's a couple weeks long, there's only one lesson, one class a week. Um, it, there are still like all of these things with the planning and the recipes and the organization and then like prepping the kitchen, weighing out all of the ingredients, prepping everything for everyone. You know, everyone's going at kind of a different pace and is starting at a different level. And then there is the class itself and then there's cleanup after that. And so Sebastian, our other main character and chef, in the beginning, he only sought out Nina as a helper because he was like, I can't, I'm not that mobile. My leg is broken. I cannot do everything I need to do. But by the end of the story, he has really come to appreciate how much work she is doing regardless of the fact that his leg is broken and i feel like that also is so true in a lot of kitchens that there is just so much work to be done and even when people might only see a class or might only see a pastry shop the amount of work and planning and organization that comes before and after those things is just ginormous it's so much work and i do think that there was a good a good glimpse into that on a not pastry note but about this series of books i think the author um julie kaplan i think she does a really really great job having side characters that are really complex and not just like one or two but having a whole group of them and having a whole group of side characters that are so different from each other and yet become friends and also in my many experiences abroad this is something that i have really found to be true that nothing bonds someone faster than a shared experience particularly a shared international experience and so and so in this story we have Nina, our main character, and then Sebastian, the love interest and chef that she is working for. And then we also have obviously the people who are taking the pastry class and then this really grumpy guy who is working at the patisserie where they're teaching the class out of. So we have um, a young girl who is fast friends with Nina. And then we have uh, an older French woman who uh, has visited this patisserie cat that's not doing so well. And then we have a couple that is um, kind of on an extended honeymoon. And then we have this other guy who is, <laughs> I know seems like a random character, but really well rounds out um, the whole group, just from a different kind of perspective and skill set. And throughout the book, all of these different side characters are kind of on their own journey with themselves. They all obviously want to study French patisserie, but like the older French woman, um, she really misses her family, her son and her grandchildren. Uh, she hasn't seen or really talked to in a long time. And in hopes of seeing them maybe this summer, she wants to be able to create something special for them. And so her journey in patisserie is really, really tied to her family. And for the other young woman, Maddie, she is in a, in a study abroad year, but she is um, in a dorm all by herself. So she's super lonely, right? She's abroad and used to having this huge family back home and suddenly she feels really isolated. So for her, the food and the sharing is more about community than it is becoming a professional chef. And then the couple on their honeymoon, they really want to create things for each other and kind of step out of their comfort zones and kind of have this special time together. And then we have this last guy who um, used to be a chef for, oh gosh, I think it was the Navy. And so he's really fantastic at cooking like 
really massive scale like a lot of food um with whatever is on hand but things like precision and like the fine details are not in his wheelhouse so you have all of these different people um and kind of different reasons for showing up and then they're all kind of becoming this little family community which is just so heartwarming as far as rating this story um you might know by now i kind of struggle with giving things concrete ratings i would say mm, i think i would give this story probably if we're talking good read scale which always gives me anxiety i would say probably a 3.5 or more normally i think a four out of five stars i think it was really a solid story a lot of things i clearly really loved about it, i connected to um but i think even if you're not a pastry chef um i think it's a book that you could really enjoy if you are a pastry chef i think it does give you a lot of these little glimpses into pastry and patisserie even in france that um you might not otherwise <laughs> receive or know about so i think that that's really sweet as i mentioned i do think that there are a lot of really, really great and even deep moments, despite being just a rom-com, that things like kind of family dynamics, friend dynamics, um, all of that kind of came to light through different characters, which I really enjoyed. Um, I think my major criticism with this story that I think can be really true of the genre, but I think was was true in this story particularly, that even though there were some things that were stumbling blocks or hardship um, or not perfectly easy, and obviously Nina is figuring out her own life, she's not really sure of the path that she's on, there were a lot of times in the story where things were challenging and yet still like very easy. <laughs> I don't know. It seemed I, I like a lot of rom-coms that there were just a lot of moments of like rose-colored glasses. Everything is beautiful. Everything is fun. Everything's amazing. So it makes it a really good like beach read, I think. You know, it was very easy to read. It's very comfortable. It kind of seems like a rom-com equivalent to a cozy mystery, if that makes any sense. Like in the genre of mystery, and then you have cozy mysteries that you know are going to be a bit more lighthearted and sweeter and not really aggressive or <laughs> terrifying. I think in the genre of romance, I think that this one was that kind of niche as well, that it was just like, it's very sweet. It's very lighthearted. It's very fun. And I also would say the same thing about the other books in the series, that they all have this way of really focusing on this romantic couple and relationship, but also this whole side cast of friends. And there's always a spot, no matter the story, for food and for travel. So if you like Paris Patisserie and if you like all of those different things that I've mentioned, I do absolutely recommend checking the others out in the series. Okay, that is all for today. Thank you for listening to me, even though today was just a monologue instead of a discussion. Um, I will be back next month for Maddie's Baking Book Club, June 2023. We are reading the book Love and Saffron. Um, I'm very excited for this one. It is one that I have roped my mom into reading and discussing with me so please stay tuned the last sunday of every month is when i post these videos with the recipes and tutorials for my book inspired bake and of course that is open to all of you if you want to post anything of your own inspired by the book of the month for more information on the other books that are coming up this summer, make sure to check out my previous video where I talked all about all of the upcoming books. And if you do want to participate, make sure to post over on Instagram. You can use the hashtag Maddie's Baking Book Club to make sure that I see your creation. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.